Welcome back to Super Syntex Podcast. With me, as always, is Chad Conine and DJ Ramirez. Guys, how we doing? Surviving. Surviving. About to start a three-day run. Three days, three games, in three different cities. Wow. Yeah. I got Marlon Coleman tonight in Stephenville, Lorena Palestine Westwood on Friday night in Corsicana, and then... Texas Tech versus Central Florida on Saturday afternoon, evening in Lubbock. That's a, that's a bit of hiking there. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. Not my first rodeo, though. Right. It is a busy time of year with uh, football, basketball, everything going on. Uh, but certainly. Volleyball. Yeah, volleyball, state volleyball. That's where partially where I've been this week. Yeah. Uh, but it is obviously still playoff football time. And so, you know, by the time we get to the second round of the playoffs, the quality of the matchup elevates to press box level heights. Uh, Victor Wimbanyana level heights. How about that? Um, uh, eight of our Central Texas teams are playing uh, teams that have 10 or more wins this week. Um And then nine of our own teams have at least 10 wins. So they're either 10 and one or 11 and oh, um, here is the question for you, uh, which single digit win team in central Texas has the best chance to knock off a double digit win team. Uh, you all have access to the picks box, which should probably help you in this, uh, looking at the matchups, but what do you think? So we're talking about China Spring, La Vega, Gatesville, Tig, and that's it. That's right. Yeah. Like, yeah. So so not a uh yeah, not a ton of options there, but uh of those, what would you say? Well, I think uh, you know, I think La Vega against Panther Creek is an is a matchup to keep an eye on. Um, you know, La Vega, La Vega has a lot of playoff tradition they they have ex playoff expectations last week um it was kind of funny at the end of the of, of a kind of wonky dunbar la vega game um uh in which the fourth quarter dragged on and then by the time the game was actually over i think everybody was ready to go home and the the stadium guys they're holding the trophy and he wants to make this big presentation and of course we all know how post game don hyde can be you know just kind of all business <laughs> Uh, not a lot of want, wanting to mess around with anything frivolous, right? So the stadium guy's got a microphone. He's standing there at, at, at midfield, and he wants them all to come over and crowd around and have a big celebration. And Hyde's like, go get the trophy. He's like, Captain, <laughs> go get the trophy. <laughs> and the guy, the guy I like, your, like, no, I like no, your Don no, Hyde impression. The whole, the whole team, yeah, it was when it, the whole team come over. So the whole team went over and and, and Coach Hyde kind of got on board. And, and then he told him, he's like, look, this isn't the trophy we're playing for, right? I'm like, this is great. We got a trophy. This isn't the one we're playing for. And um, La Vega takes that attitude into a matchup with ranked Frisco Panther Creek, and they're playing them in their backyard at the star. Um, but, you know, look out for the Pirates if you're Panther Creek. Surprise, you didn't say, uh, and maybe you're saving this for DJ, I don't know, uh, that you didn't say China Spring. I mean, y'all both picked China Spring against a 10-1 mm-hmm. and one mm-hmm. Anna team. I'm what tired you- of being wrong about China Spring this year, though. <laughs> what do you think, <laughs> DJ? Um, I had just gotten off the phone with Tyler Beatty that morning that I made my picks. And so I don't know if it's just talking to Tyler Beatty that gets me pumped up about China Spring. Hey, I'm gonna interrupt you right there because we've done we've done a Teague on here. Uh we've I don't think nobody anybody's ever mispronounced Lorena. Uh, <laughs> Steve Steve Boggs does, but uh <laughs> it's gotta be Beatty. It's it's just gotta it? be. Yeah. It, I'm Is sure it it's Beatty. Uh, like Glenn Beatty. Uh, okay. I mean, you've said well, Tyler Beatty for two years now, but I, I just, <laughs> nobody's I, told me otherwise. Okay. I, I, I want to get that on the record. What, how you pronounce it? But I, I'm just gonna guess if it's like I said, like everyone week. else who has ever had the name Beatty, it's probably Beatty. It's but probably anyway, go on. 
Well, anyway, let, let us so not let us not miss an opportunity to have Bryce pronunciation guide on the podcast. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> you were saying, DJ, about China Spring. Um, I just have no reason not to pick the Cougars. Uh, obviously, it's a different team this year, but Anna's also a different team, and you know they just I I've seen them come back from nothing to win a championship so i'm and obviously like i said different team they came into the season with a younger team or an inexperienced but now they've got you know what like they got eight wins under their belt a whole regular season i i think they can beat anna um but i also think i i think that out of all of these matchups, I picked the underdog except for the La Vega Panther Creek game. <laughs> Obviously, um, and and like Chad said last week, they they played kind of like a weird game against Dunbar, and uh, and now they're playing basically at Frisco. So, um, yeah, and you you've been yeah. on that uh, Tig train all year long. Uh, you got to see the Lions last week. You're and you know I f- I feel like you're. Uh, opinion on them was justified the way they played against West in that game. So could they knock off, you know, a Winsboro team? Uh, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility for sure. Um, no, but I feel like Tig's been playing in a, in a good district for them. You know, they, they, they play good football. Obviously they had to, to beat West last week, but I don't know that they're ready to jump up and beat a ranked team. We'll we'll see. We'll see. I, mm-hmm. I agree that it's a tough game. Uh back to China Spring Anna for just a second. That was the regional final last year. This year they're meeting in the second round of the playoffs. Of course, China Spring did win that one. So I think they've got that vibe of, hey, we've beaten these guys once. You know, we could do it again. Of course, Anna will have, you know, redemption payback on their mind. I went with Anna just because um well full disclosure first of all uh as mentioned i was at state volleyball all day yesterday uh finished some couple of stories finished videos finished page notes uh got ready to leave and went oh no i need to make my picks so uh so i did that rather quickly Uh, i did notice that both of you had gone with china spring and so that may have uh, colored my vote just a little bit going, hmm, uh, could I maybe get one on them here with Anna? Uh, so you picked your game based on who we picked. I did. Because you full, picked last. Full disclosure. Not, <laughs> not, I don't do that every week. No, but, no, no. I, I mean, uh, it's, it's all but, fair. When, the way we do it now, that's the way. I mean, it's all fair in in love and war in this. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So let me uh, let me. I, I let think me that's going to that, be a really good game. Yeah, well, I, yeah. That that's a that's a highlight one for sure. I think, you know, like uh, I guess I guess Bali Sports, whatever they still do the game of the week. That that would be a candidate for that probably this week. Although second round of the playoff, there's going to be some good ones. I just wanted to say when I first looked at this. I thought this could be a week where we lose, where we go zero for eight in schools bigger than two A. Mm. I mean, I think I think you know Lorena has a pretty good chance to win. Uh, I think Lorena has a very good chance to win. But yeah, I think I think Lorena has a good chance to win. But but I think this. I, I neither of you. Do either of you watch Game of Thrones? I can't remember if when when I was Tyrion Lannister a couple weeks ago. No, so, I don't. Uh, Game of Thrones, they would have this tendency to just kill everybody in, <laughs> in an episode. You know, like there's a famous episode called The Red Wedding. And, and mm-hmm. I'm kind of dreading this being the Red Wedding week for Central Texas schools bigger than uh, than um, 2A. Because, like I said, I think I think we could look up Friday night and how we have 2A and, and six man left. A lot but, of these a lot of these teams have an expiration date and mm-hmm. uh, and it may be coming up on a few of them. Uh, as I mentioned, I mean the 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 challenges are are getting incrementally harder each week. Well, uh, if Lorena wins, they might play Columbus next week. They'll likely play Columbus next mm, week, right? Yeah. If Conley I mean, wins, they play Quero next week, probably. So. Yeah, that's that's tough. Obviously, uh, we saw what Quero did to Robinson uh, in in week one of the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, the Gobblers are pretty good. Let's. 
flip this around. Conversely, there will be, uh, as we said, some good teams whose seasons come to an end. Um, we, I, I think I said what we have nine um, teams with double digit wins. Um, of those, who has the toughest game? Who has, you know, who's most likely to get knocked off? Mm. I, I think, think Belton's got a pretty tough matchup. And I mean, I did pick Belton, but I mean, they're going up against a team that's got the same record as them, mm-hmm. kind of pretty evenly matched, I-, I feel like. But it could end up like the university game where they just had a little bit of an extra kick. Um, no, I-, I think Belton's a good answer. Uh, so they're going up against a Richmond Randall team, uh, which. By the way, I think that's got to be a relatively new school. Um, uh, you know, I don't remember it from like years gone by. But uh, as DJ said, they're also 10 and 1, just like Belton. Uh, they're in the district, the same district as the Brenham Cubs, and they kicked the crap out of Brenham. So if they've done that, they must be pretty good. But right? so did Belton. Right, Chad? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't don't be hating on my hometown. What do you think? You know, uh, as, as negative as, as as I was just now about the um about the bigger schools and and another one I mentioned, Lorena has a good chance. I think Whitney probably has a good chance to win uh, against a six and five Tatum team. Um, yeah, I mean Belton, Richmond, Randall—that's a tough game because it's both ten and one teams. But I'm looking at these others. I don't think Mart, you know, is going to lose. I think uh, Chilton Agua Dulce is, is probably a pretty good matchup. Agua Dulce made famous by the uh, Robert O'Keen uh, song. Uh, Robert O'Keen and uh, oh, who's that other Joker? You know, you know uh, Julia Roberts' former husband. Uh, uh, Lyle Lovett. Lyle Lovett. Well, I could not remember that. Uh, they both they both put out a song called the Front Porch Song, and one of the lines is, "This old porch is just a." Uh, Wyatt Hereford Bull in Agua Dulce, Texas. Okay. So that's uh, Chilton versus Agua Dulce. So yeah, I got to w- watch out for that that uh, that bull Chilton does. So, Chad pulling out random song lyrics uh, <laughs> to uh, that's the podcast. I mean, it's drive it's home our like, Chad random song lyric Game of Thrones reference. Yeah, podcast. Uh, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> excuse me. Um, I'm sticking with Belton as my answer. Uh, I think that's a pretty tough game. I did pick Randall, um, as did Chad and and DJ, as she mentioned, picked uh, picked Belton. But DJ's been known to roll the dice on her picks. So. <laughs> it hasn't always paid off, but <laughs> sometimes it has. Uh, uh, so we talked about this team a couple weeks ago here on the pod. But we do have one team playing for a state championship this week, and that would be the Methodist Home Bulldogs. They go uh, to play for the TCAF state title in six man. DJ, you got a chance to go to MCH and talk to those guys uh, this week. Uh, what were just your impressions? Well, uh, overall. I think that whatever Scott Drew touches turns to gold, apparently. <laughs> Matt uh, Rogers is a former Baylor basketball manager, right? Yeah, he used to be a former Baylor basketball manager when Scott Drew first came over, then was a GA uh, before coming out to coach um, the Bulldogs. And, you know, obviously, first of all, beautiful campus. I've always driven past it and I never really knew what it was until you sent me there. <laughs> Um, and, you know, trying to, I had to drive all the way to the back to find the the football field. Um, even though there was a gate on the, in the back of the football field, I just didn't know where it was. Um, but in terms of football, I mean, obviously they're, they're pretty good. They're playing for a state championship and just the way, like there's, there's only 17 kids on the team. Mm. Um, which isn't bad for six man. Yeah. That's, that's a, I feel like a pretty good Mm -hmm. number for, for that size, uh, for that level. And I I talked to London Bickham also, and, uh, you can just tell that these kids are just out there playing for each other and, you know, playing 
for the love of the game. And I think that's kind of gone a long way. And in terms of the game that they're playing this week, they've also got a lot of motivation because the kid of victory, um, they beat them last season mm. by like 50 points wow. to like end their season. And so they're, it, it, they're kind of going, looking for a little bit of payback and, uh, yeah. And this year, MCH is 10 and 1, Decatur Victory 8 and 2. Uh, one thing about that game last year, of course, they would not have had London Bickham on the field. He missed uh, mm -hmm. most of last season, if not all of it. Yeah, uh, I think he got injured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, he's, he, you know, clearly, uh, if we're just going by stats and probably what Matt Rogers would say, I think is probably their best guy, but. But they got a lot of, I feel like a lot of talent on that team. If you look at the stats and, and what they've done this year and the way they've performed, I mean, um, I think I think MCH has a good chance to bring home its second state championship under Matt Rogers. Yeah. Um, overall, it was just a really good conversation with both of them. Um, I rarely get uh, interviews sometimes with teenagers where I feel like good about the interview because sometimes I feel like I have anxiety talking to them because I know that they're going to have anxiety talking to me and we don't always get mm. the best answers so uh but it was a pretty good interview with both a lot of nervous them. energy flying around then <laughs> yeah. yeah I get it I get it uh Chad you look like you had something to say yeah you know uh I'm gonna do something I'm gonna say positive things about two different unrelated organizations, um, which, you know, I don't say a whole lot of positive things. So here we go. <laughs> Methodist Children's Home is, uh, Methodist Children's Home is one of the great organizations in Texas. It's a long stand, uh, in, in Waco, Texas, in particular, it's a long standing group. Um, I don't think, I mean, we talk about football here and, and Methodist Children's Home football and, and they're, they're good all the time. But the, what this organization does, I mean, they essentially save kids' lives in a lot of ways. Mm. And it's pro they don't, probably don't have 100%, you know, at that, they don't bat a 1,000 probably, but they, they do a lot of good for a lot of kids and have for a long time. Um, and for them to be, you know, playing good in football and, win and playing for a state championship is just awesome. You know, I don't care what organization it is. For them to be having success is fantastic. Um, the other organization I want to say something positive about is sixmanfootball.com. They do an amazing thing that they, that they rank every six man team in the state every week and they rank them by division and they rank them in their Uber rankings. Right. And they do point spreads. Uh, yeah. Yeah. DJ, yeah. if you have not been taking advantage of that, I mean, uh, I did not know it existed. until Yes. <laughs> you can but, click uh, on those point spreads every week and uh Yeah. Uh, we're not gonna. I, I don't we're not gonna that. tell you the, the secret rankings, sauce right. of our, of our picks every week, DJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, but I go by the Uber rankings, and this week in the Uber rankings, uh, Methodist Children's Home is 40th among all organizations. So you know, most of those in the top 40 are public schools. You know, uh, the likes of Abbott and Oglesby and Jonesboro from around here, and you know, the very best in the state, and. Uh, MCH is sitting there at 40, the, I'm the highest ranked team in their division, one of the highest ranked private schools, period, and they're rank, ranked well ahead of Decatur, so that makes them the the favorite. I actually don't use the point spreads. What is the point spread on that game this week, Bryce? Do you know? Uh, let me look, remember? I can look it up real quick. I, I think I have it up, actually. Uh, let's see. Methodist Home is favored by 20. Okay, so there you go. So there you go. There you go. MCH is the favorite if you, you're going by sixmanfootball.com. Uh yeah, I'll briefly talk about uh that very well run website. Started mm -hmm. by Granger Huntress, uh mm -hmm. back in the infancy of the internet and has been uh uh kind of the Bible of six man football in Texas for you know the better part of twenty years or more. Um I think he has since Granger has passed that off uh, to some other guys. They've taken up that because, uh, I mean, I know he had another real job, you know. Um, uh, I remember he like me announced his retirement from it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember meeting Granger. Uh, <laughs> so, Chad, this was the famous game where I 
went to San Angelo uh -huh. via Abilene. Uh -huh. Uh, took a little bit of a wrong turn as I was chomping on my barbecue sandwich, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, getting a barbecue stain on my white t-shirt. Uh, but yeah, why do you was, own white t-shirts? It was. I mean, that's not a great move on your like wardrobe thinking, right? You should never have anything that's just white because you know you. That was a song it. lyric, you moron. Oh. <laughs> My my uh, reference was far less obscure than yours was. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, that's a is it Tim McGraw barbecue stain on my white t shirt. Anyway, uh, yes, it was Calvert Sanderson, two thousand two state championship game. We used to cover Calvert DJ, mm -hmm. uh, and I went to San Angelo for a state championship game. And uh, that was the first time I met Granger, but <clears throat> they do, they do amazing job covering six man football. And so shout out to six man football.com. Um, I, I was interested to see where you were going with the two organizations you were going to sh shout out. MCH made a lot of sense. I didn't expect it to be Baylor basketball, uh, but I was going to, I was wondering to see where that, where that might go. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I'm I'm all for promoting Baylor basketball these days. More on that later. Okay. <laughs> uh, one one quick word on uh, the the reference DJ made earlier to Scott Drew and Matt Rogers. Matt Rogers was a, a manager at Baylor basketball. Um, again, this is going to just please the Texas Tech guy so much that we're uh, praising Baylor and Scott Drew. But they did a cool thing when they won the national championship, and that is. Uh, they did like a T-shirt or a, a plaque or something. I, I think there was a T-shirt uh, where they listed the name of like every one of their managers, players, assistant coaches, GAs, like through the Scott Drew years. And obviously, it you know, and I think they spelled out, you know, whatever. Uh, what what year did they win? Twenty one. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe they spelled it out 21 and and Matt Rogers name was on there, of course. But, uh, you know, I thought that was a cool thing to, you know, to give a little shout out to all people that weren't involved in the current national championship team, but but helped build it up, you know, build up the program. So nice, um, nice, nice little shout out. My my one of my best friends who was actually my first editor uh, when I started at the Lariat, Ben Everett, he when he graduated, he moved on to study sports management and became a manager for Scott Drew um, and was there when they won the national title. So um, Matt Rogers was as well. I saw him. Uh, in fact, uh, I did a, a fan story and went out to the concourse of the stadium. And I ran into Matt Rogers at the national championship game in Indianapolis. And so I interviewed Matt uh about you know watching them win and stuff so that was cool um finally dj in your rewind column this week you talked about how giddy you got watching that west uh t game and just were like this is great this is football <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> which got me to thinking for each of us uh what is just your favorite thing about high school football football in general it could be a play or a player or a tradition you know just a great game what do you think what do you most love to see well you know I, i've observed i've kind of been thinking a lot this year and of course y'all know how i feel about college football meeting ball and all that you know mm. and uh and football in some ways football is really kind of a dumb game you know there's like so many things that can go wrong when you think about it 11 players on both sides of the ball and any one of them could can commit a penalty at any given time right and how many sports is that? Is that the case, right? Plus, you're playing with an oblong ball that, that uh -huh, doesn't bounce. Uh -huh. You know, right, right. Yeah. So, but but the the thing is, though, so many things have to work together for things to go like the plan is for them to go. You know, and and so what you see is when you get to this time of year, especially, you see all these guys that have learned how to make that work together, and and it, you know it's fun to watch when it is working. And then it's fun to watch teams that are on this road to a state championship game and how many guys have to come along and contribute for them to get there. You know, it's, it's amazing. We're, we're in round two and I was 
I was hanging out with a friend at a local establishment last night and, and she's not much of a football fan. In fact, last year in the Super Bowl, she asked me if the California Pirates were playing, by which she meant the Las Vegas Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> and I was telling her how it's a big deal if teams make it to play to Thanksgiving week, you know, the third round right. of the playoffs. Right. And and she was like, How many, how many do they have to win to win state? And I said, six. And she was like, So they're only halfway. Not I'm even. Like, yeah. And I'm like, well, y- yeah, but that it's that that's this week is kind of the week when it becomes a big deal. Wouldn't we, wouldn't we all kind of agree on that? We, we have said round? for years, Chad, you've said it mm-hmm. on here. I've said it. Uh, you get to Thanksgiving week, you've done something. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, so you win two games in the playoffs. Okay. Okay. Now you've, you've got a season to remember, uh, you know, um, except for Isabella thinks you're only halfway. So big whoop <laughs> <laughs> halfway through the playoffs. is not a small <laughs> deal. DJ, how would you answer this question? Um, obviously, as y'all know, I've, I've never been a football person, um, partially because I grew up Mexican and it's always irritated me that it's called football because for us, football is soccer, right? right? Mm-hmm. Like, and my dad, he constantly is joking with me. He's like, are you covering football from the, like that you play with your feet? Or are you covering handball? And <laughs> yeah, I liked like, that. I liked that line. Um, obviously. I had to translate it from Spanish because he didn't say it in Spanish. Oh, gotcha. Um, yeah, he said, "Are you covering fu- football de mano? Or are you covering, you know, football?" And I was like, it's both. <laughs> um, uh, but what I've come to appreciate about football here, especially in Central Texas, is just how um, much of a rallying point it is for so many people, mm. and you know, like everybody's there on a Friday night. And like, even when I was at Baylor and we were doing terribly, um, because I started at Baylor during the one and 11 year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and even then, like Which my, one? <laughs> <laughs> the, the Matt rule one, the Matt rule one. Um, but yeah, like my friends and I would still go to the games and I would run the line and like, we would like. I and I don't remember having f- that much fun at football while I was in high school. Obviously, partially because our team sucked, um, and the other part because it was just like tough to be out there on a Friday. I was also in band for one year, uh, okay. so part of it was like, oh, it's my obligation to be here. It, you know, yeah. um, but <clears throat> I I don't know. I just really appreciate how people you know just go and have fun at these games and sometimes they get carried away um i i don't know how many times i've overheard things that fans yell at the at the refs at the other team at the, you know oh, their <laughs> own coaches and players coaches. Yes. yeah and uh yeah. it's it's always especially funny when like i'm sitting in the press box and it's like the guy's right outside the press box and like he's like calling stuff out to and it's always a guy. You never hear like <laughs> occasionally you'll hear a woman, but it's always a guy who's like going off at somebody on the field. Um still actually, still angry about some holding call he got 20 years ago. Yeah, probably. Mm. <laughs> um, but I mean, overall, I just I don't know. It's really, it's really cool to go and see just, you know, people being together and like rooting for something yeah i love that as well that is a great part of it one of the cool things sort of the iconic things you see a lot of in texas high school football is like the caravan from one mm-hmm. town to the next for a playoff game and you know that old idea of turn out the lights you know the whole town's going to you know wherever for that next game uh what i love about football a, a lot of things uh basketball as y'all know is my favorite sport but uh and it would be hard for me to pick a second favorite. Love football, love baseball. Um, uh, you know, there's other sports. Disc I enjoy. golf. The disc golf. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, tennis is good. I mean, you know, there's a lot of sports. Obviously, Chad is a big golf guy. Um, but uh, one of the things I love about football is, um, and I have said it many times on Twitter, if there's ever a trick play, you'll know me to say, 
chicanery. I love chicanery. <laughs> uh, I love when a trick play happens. Flea flickers to me are like one of the most fun things in football. Uh, anytime there's an end of the game situation where they have to lateral about 11 billion times, that's fun. Um, just when things start getting chaotic and wild, um, you know, that's always cool. A good, well executed hook and ladder. I mean, come on, that's awesome. That, that has like basketball vibes to it. Cause you're like kind of running a screen, a picket fence or something. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. Uh, I feel yeah. like European Bryce would have been a big rugby fan. <laughs> If you've been born in, like, say, you know, Dublin or Edinburgh. Baylor has a rugby team, a uh, club team, and they want us to come out and cover them. And I'm like, dude, we've got <laughs> a Division One university with uh, 18 varsity sports. we got McLennan uh, Community College. we got 70 high schools. Yeah, I think we're good. Uh, You're 27th on the list, Baylor rugby. Yes, we, we don't have time for club sports. I'm sorry. But uh, write that up yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's what uh, the sushi but, sweepers for, though. Like, huh? Lariat's right there. The lariat is right there. <laughs> there you go. The lariat, cut, yeah. Uh, and then obviously a great game that just is like hard hitting, comes down to the wire. Um, when kids are making plays and just uh, there's been so many great ones I've seen over the years, and I mean, I uh, including at like the state championship level, I saw Robinson lose a state championship game on a faked extra point. They were uh, and they went for two DJ, but what they should have done is just lined up and gone for two. If you're going to, if you're going to go for two, line up, go for two. They I remember ran a, listening to that on they, the radio. They went for two out of the two points. They, yeah, I was the there. Fake. They ran a fake extra point with a guy running behind the holder and he sort of threw it to him and, and he made a run at it, but uh, they, yeah, they snuffed it out. And I was just like, Oh man, what a play call. That the was. chicanery didn't go that well that time. No, no. And here's the thing about chicanery. I will say, I mean, you can't run it all the time. It has to be well set up by good, hard nosed, well executed football, whether that's passing or running or whatever. Uh, but I mean, you can't run a trick play on every play. Um, but you know, when it's done right and it's, it's timed perfectly, then, I mean, think about the Philly special in the Super Bowl. I mean, that was awesome, you know, cool moment. So yes, we do love football and we're, and we're, uh, trying to indoctrinate DJ and she's slowly coming along. <laughs> I, well, I like, after dark last week, she was like, oh, that game was so awesome. I know. And, and she was texting us during the game. Uh, <laughs> it is funny to me to hear you say, I grew up Mexican, like like you're something else now. <laughs> no, I am still Mexican. <laughs> I grew like... up Mexican, but I identify as Caucasian now. <laughs> no, never. <laughs> um, always, yeah, no, it's just... I, you know what I mean when I say it. I knew what you meant, but it still sounded funny, and I had to take a shot at you. <laughs> All right, DJ, uh, you got the China Spring game. I got the China Spring, yeah, because you let me pick, and I was like, if if China Spring does lose, um, which, you know, not I'm not saying they will, but if they do lose, I would like to be there for Cash McCollum's final uh, high school football game. So, yeah. Yeah. And and we're not obviously uh, hoping China. Spring no, loses. no, we we're not hoping that anybody loses. We do like our jobs. Yeah, and like <laughs> like we we like having teams all the way you know playing to state level. Uh, and then uh, MCH on Saturday. Yep. Yeah. So state championship game up there in Fort Worth. Chad mentioned his schedule. Uh, Marlon <laughs> Coleman tonight. Lorena Palestine Westwood tomorrow night. Yeah. And then uh, my schedule has been a little in flux. Uh, Crawford volleyball won yesterday. And so I'm going to go watch uh, Crawford play for a state championship in volleyball tomorrow. Um, and so Jeff Coker's team will try to win their third state championship. So a young, a young bunch of lady pirates there. They only have one senior, I think. So that's uh, maybe a little bit overachieving at this point for them. I would have to look that up. Baron Highland is a senior. Uh, I'm trying to think if they have any others. That you might be right. 
So, uh, well, there you go. You got your roster. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It is a young group. And one of the. Oh, Allie is, Maddox. Yeah. Allie Maddox. And Baron Highland. Hi- yeah, and, and Baron Highland. Yeah. Yeah. So, two seniors. Uh, yeah. And one of the girls who was making big plays in that game yesterday for them at the state semifinals over Winthorst was Ella Connell, who's a freshman. Freshman. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, and of course the China or the, excuse me, the Crawford fans were, she's a freshman, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, do it all of that. So you gotta love that. Uh, all right. Y'all enjoy the games. We'll see you there. Peace out. <laughs>